everyone. Hope you're all finding yourselves well and healthy in the solace of your home. Today, we have a vinyasa flow class. We will be working on grounding and really trying to root down deep into the earth in order to find some balance, stability, and centering. Definitely things that we could have more of um, in the here and now. Um, it is a level two class simply because we will be moving a little bit more fluidly through the postures. Um, not so much cueing will be given. That being said, if you're new to the practice, feel free to pause the video at any part, uh, especially if you feel the need to stay in a posture for a little bit longer. So throughout this grounding class, expect some balancing postures either on the legs or through the arms and hopefully we feel energized and uplifted even as we work through rooting down. We'll be needing at least one block, two blocks, um, if you feel that the hamstrings can use a little bit more support. If you don't have any blocks, you can use a pair of books that are roughly the same size and hopefully light. And if you don't have any books, you can also use um, some sturdy boxes. All right, so let's begin. We're gonna come lying down on our backs. Have a block nearby. Um, we'll be using that later on. So come rolling all the way onto your backside. And you'll have your feet flat on the floor. Right. So moving your feet towards the width of your mat. And keeping your feet pointing straight ahead. Okay, now you're gonna rest your knees against one another in our constructive rest position. Flipping your palms up towards the ceiling and then gently closing the eyes. See if you can make any small adjustments necessary to feel about 5% more comfortable in this shape. So experimenting with the position of your feet, maybe moving the feet forward a smidge. You can see that feels more comfortable. You feel more receptive in that with that adjustment. Or perhaps snuggling the shoulder blades underneath your chest and then resting the torso back down will help you settle in more. As we turn the palms up towards the sky, we're actually spinning the inseams of the arms upwards to begin to encourage the front body, the heart, to open up. Opening up to whatever that universal consciousness has in store for us. And simply being receptive to everything that we are, everything that we have within, everything that we have without in this precise moment. Slowly as you relax the body, begin to transition that awareness gradually from the busyness of the mind and into your breath. Just noticing how the body changes shape as you inhale, perhaps feeling the body expand with the in-breath. Observing the body contract gently with the out breath. And with every fresh cycle of breath here, adding more length to the inhale, more length to the exhale, using our pranayama as a means to really drop into where the body is. Eyes are closed, start to transition into breathing through the nose, exhaling out through the nose, and begin to engage the base of your throat so that through here, we take the breath in and move into our ujjayi breath. We'll stay for around five more cycles of breath, and I'd like for you to invite an intention for your practice. So think of a present tense statement. Think of something that you would want to cultivate more of in your life right now. Perhaps your intention is, I am compassionate. It could be, I am trusting, 
or maybe even I am energized. Let's repeat that intention three more times, quietly in your mind. Sealing it in with this last big breath, filling the belly up. Exhale, letting it float out into the universe. Go ahead now with your next inhalation, flutter the eyelids open and enter the room. All right, we're going to separate the knees wide apart. Bring the feet flat on your mat and then let's start off with a nice gentle embrace. So just using your arm bones wrapping it around your shin bones, pressing your thighs into the belly, perhaps swinging here side to side, massaging the back muscles. And then when you're ready, begin to release the left foot on the floor and we'll cross the right ankle on top of the left thigh. So flexing the top foot, toes are curling towards the outer right knee. Take a big breath in as you widen through your heart center and exhaling, lift both legs in towards the rest of your body. Interlace the fingers behind the left thigh. And then your next exhalation, gently drawing the legs in towards you. So try to keep the back of your pelvis still in contact with the floor so that your lumbar spine has that natural curve. Feeling the outer glute here, even the hamstring, have that sensation in your reclined pigeon. Take one more breath and then exhale, we switch. So release the right foot on the floor, left ankle crosses the right thigh, again flexing that top foot and then exhaling, pulling your legs in towards you. Very good. So with every exhalation, you want to just draw the legs in a little bit closer. And then feeling this as well in your IT band. So that um, thick ligament that runs along the lateral side of your leg. Take another breath, feeling it in the outer hips. Exhale, release both feet down onto the floor. All right, now we're going to grab our trusty old block or your book or a box. Take it the skinniest orientation and you're gonna take it in between your inner legs. So squeezing the block with the inner thighs, feel the outer hips firming in as well. Plug the palms face down on the floor and you're gonna move your hands off the mat. So take it um, onto your regular floor. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lift the legs up, flex the ankles and take the knees right above your hips. Shins are parallel to the floor, so the shins have that tabletop orientation. Good, now pressing both shoulder blades into the floor. Inhale here. As you exhale, we're gonna tip both legs over to the left side, letting yourself roll onto the outer left hip, but keep the back of the right shoulder gluing down into the floor. Inhale here. Exhale, we lift the legs back through center, inhaling, rolling over to the right outer hip, holding it here, keeping the navel drawing into the spine. With your next exhale, lifting the knees back over the hips, inhaling, rolling down to the left side, starting to feel your belly muscles awaken. Exhale, coming back through center, good. Inhale, pause the other side, back of the shoulders pressing into the ground. Inhale, take it back through center. This time, we're gonna straighten the legs up to the sky. Keep squeezing the block with your inner thighs. Take an inhale, legs move over to the left side, pausing here. Can you move your feet closer to that left shoulder, holding for three, for two, and one, exhale, passing through center, one last side, taking the legs over to the right side, holding it there, good, feeling the obliques start to shake, that's good, holding for three, for two, and then one, come all the way back to center, and then bend your knees and relax for a little bit, just a little bit. 
Lift the arms up to the ceiling and you're gonna flip your palms, spread the fingers as if you could push the ceiling away from you. Take your shins back into that tabletop position. Begin to reactivate those adductors, your inner thighs, and you're drawing the navel in to minimize that space between your lumbar spine and the floor. Take a breath in, begin to lift your head up with your shoulder blades off the floor, gazing straight up to the sky. And then with your exhale, roll your tailbone up. Knees come towards your armpits and hold. And then inhale, lower the pelvis back down to the floor. We'll do that four more times. Exhale, knees all the way in towards the armpits, hold. Inhale, slowly roll. Good. Exhale, knees to the armpits. Lift your shoulders a little bit higher. Keep them lifted. Inhale to roll. Last two. Exhale, knees come all the way in. Feel the hip flexors wake up as well. Inhale, rolling the pelvis down. Last one. Exhale, knees all the way into the armpits. This time we're going to hold. Lift the shoulder blades off the floor. Hold for four. For three. Squeeze the block. For two. And one. And slowly release. Move the block off to the side. Hug the knees in towards your chest. Take a breath in. Open the mouth. Oh, good. Now take the fingertips underneath your knees. And we're going to rock and roll forward. Tap the toes. And exhale back. So just getting into the entire back body here as we awaken your abdominal muscles. Let's take two more. Good. And this last one, we're going to roll all the way up to seated. So crossing your legs, moving your props off to the side, and we're going to come onto our hands and our knees. So we have here our first tabletop position. Spreading the fingers, checking to see that the wrist creases are lined up with the top edge of your mat, and really rolling weight in towards the bases of your pointer finger and your thumbs. Now the knees start off underneath your hips, and then from here, we're going to transition the knees back about three inches. All right, curl the toes under, and then as you breathe in, Tilt the tailbone up towards the ceiling, belly drops to the floor. Pull the chest through the gates of the arms and then gazing forward. Now with your next exhale, simply lift your knees up. We're gonna hold it in our hovering table with an arched back for just one more breath in and then exhaling downward facing dog, tailbone all the way up and back. Pausing for a moment, bringing your feet hips width apart, and then spinning your heels slightly outwards so that the inner thighs roll towards the back of your mat. All right, we're gonna move through some rolling dogs here. As you breathe in, lift the heels up high. Roll the spine forward until the shoulders arise above the palms. You'll bend the knees, arch the back, inhale, looking forward, and then exhale, push your hips up and back downward facing dog gaze towards your ankles inhale rippling the spine forward bend the knees hover arching the back stretch the belly exhale downward facing dog lengthening the neck one last time inhale rolling the spine forward moving here with your breath arch and then exhale Adho Mukha Svanasana Pausing in down dog for about three breaths, spreading the toes, and you're really pressing down and forward with the palms. As you press into the palms, you want to feel this energetic lift in your forearms away from the ground as you try to take your chest closer towards your upper thighs. Keeping the belly hugging in so those frontal hip points are lifting up towards the frontal ribs. You'll take one more breath. And then as you breathe out, looking forward, let's take baby steps. You'll be feeling every deliberate step forward until our feet are right in between the hands. All right. Release your hands. Shake the arms out. Let's start with a big bend in your knees. And we're going to take our hands behind our lower back, interlacing the fingers. Start with a bend in the elbows. 
Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And as you breathe in, you're gonna lower the torso over the legs even more. And then maybe the elbows straighten out, keeping the joints supple. And you're lifting the fist up to the ceiling, maybe even towards the front of the room. Feeling that stretch in your pectorals, in your front shoulders. One more breath. As you exhale, limp the arms all the way down to the floor. All right, let's take a halfway lift. Inhale, fingertips either on the floor, or you can bring your hands and hold onto the sides of your legs as a form of leverage to pull that sternum forward. Keep that lower belly protecting your uh, lower back. One more breath. Exhale, we fold. And then with a flat back, inhale, come rising up to stand, rooting through the heels, using the back body to come upright, arms reaching up to the sky, palms face one another. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, palms together, lower the thumbs down to your heart space, and then by your sides, Tadasana. All right, Surya Namaskar A. We'll go um, slowly throughout each vinyasa. Inhale, float the arms all the way up and overhead. Keep the front ribs contained. Exhale, folding forward. The weight stays in the front of the feet. You can keep your knees bent. Inhale, halfway lift. So pulling the heart toward the front of the mat. And then as you exhale, let's step the right foot all the way back. Left foot all the way back. Coming into our first plank. And that being said, we're going to hold it for just about five breaths. So you wanna find that straight line from your heels, your tailbone, all the way out through the crown of your head. Curling the tailbone under so the, back, the lower back is nice and long. And you're pushing away from the floor. So you're resisting the chest away from that space in between your thumbs. At the same time, try to broaden through your collarbones by pulling that sternum forward. Navel hugging in, your front thigh is pressing up in space. One more breath. Exhale, shifting forward with control, bending the elbows, and we land all the way down onto the ground. Uncurl the toes, keep the forehead on the floor here for now, and then you're gonna hug the inner ankles towards one another. Try to release the pinky toes on the mat so the inner thighs roll up to the sky. All right, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, lift the head up. Lift the chest, Bhujangasana, Baby Cobra. And then exhale, slowly release. Move your hands underneath your elbows. So the wrists come underneath the elbows, rather. Keep the fingers spread. And then inhale, upward facing dog. So lifting up even higher until the arms begin to straighten out completely. All right, now if your back is feeling sensitive, feel free to do the first option, that Bhujangasana that we did. You're using your legs here, lifting the kneecaps up, keeping the thighs active, and then actively pulling the shoulder blades together so that you can shine your heart through the arms. One more breath, upward facing dog, and exhale, roll over your toes, downward facing dog you go. All right, take a big breath in. Exhale out the nose. Inhale, pressing the tops of the thighs back. Exhale, look forward, step the right foot in between your hands. Left foot joins the right. Inhale, halfway lift, keep the neck long. Exhale, fold, knees can continue to stay bent. Inhale, we rise up to stand. So leading here with your upper back. Reach through the pinkies and exhale, mountain pose, Tadasana. Second round, inhale, float the arms all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, folding, so the weight stays forward to protect the knee joints. Inhale, pulling the heart forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step the left foot back, the right foot back, come into your plank. Hug the navel in towards the lower back. Take one breath in. And then as you exhale, shifting forward so that you're on the tips of your toes. Elbows bend. You're going to pause halfway. Keep the upper arms grazing your rib cage, And then lower all the way down. Go ahead, flip both ankles over. And then inhale, rising up. 
upward facing dog. Inner ankles continue to hug towards one another. Exhale, rolling over the toes. Lift the hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right, good. Take another full breath. So we're going to move a little bit more quickly throughout um, the next few vinyasas. Outer arms hugging in. You're rolling that weight into the inner corners of your hands. Take a breath in. Exhale, look forward, bend the knees, left foot in between the hands. Right foot steps forward to meet the left. Inhale, halfway lift, look up and lengthen. Exhale, fold, maybe the knees work towards straight. And then inhale, come rising all the way up, reach through the thumbs. Exhale, samastitihi, equal standing. All right, inhale, float the arms all the way up. Exhale, folding down, hinging through the creases of your hips. Inhale, pulling the heart forward, tops of the shoulders drawing back. Exhale, plant your palms, right foot back, left foot back. Meet me in plank, take a breath in. And as you exhale, shifting forward, you're bending the elbows so the elbows point behind you. Let's pause halfway, Chaturanga Dandasana. And then from here, flip onto the toenails. Go straight into your back bend, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog you go. Bringing the body into that inverted V shape. Inner arms spinning forward, triceps wrapping down towards the mat and in towards your face. We'll see here for just one more full breath. And as you exhale, lift the heels, bend both knees. This time, see if you can hop lightly to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Good, take a breath in, pressing through all four corners of both feet to come rising up, and exhale, finding your mountain pose. Good, last one. Breathe in, float the arms skywards. Maybe the gaze lifts. Exhale, let's fold all the way down, stretching the back body. As you breathe in, you're pulling that heart forward. Exhale, either step to plank or you can jump back and bend the elbows in your Chaturanga Dandasana. And then finish off your vinyasa. Use your breath as your guide and we'll meet everyone in that downward facing dog. All right, five breaths right here. So keeping your foundations bearing the same amount of weight Notice if you are leaning on your right side more than the left, see if you can even that out. Just notice also if you are leaning more on the outer edges of your hands rather than the inner corner. So can you spread some of that demand into the bases of your thumbs and your pointer finger? All right, now looking towards the feet, hug the outer ankles in, Lift your inner ankles up towards your groin so the arches of the feet are active. All right. Now keeping both arms holding the same amount of weight, let's take a breath in as we lift the right leg all the way up and back, finding our three-legged down dog. Keep the top ankle flexed. So you're really feeling the front of the leg activate here. You can either flex the ankle or option here to floint as you reach through the ball of the right foot. Take one more breath as you pull that left outer hip back. Exhale, look forward. Shift the shoulders above the wrist and then we bend the right knee. Get it to touch the outer side of that right arm, so that tricep. Lift the right heel up as high as you can towards that same side buttock. And then inhale, kick the right leg all the way up and back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to the right outer arm. Lift it above the elbow. Keep pulling the chest forward. And then inhale, kick the right leg all the way up and back. Last one, we're going to add though. Exhale, right knee to the right tricep and hold. Good. Keep the right heel up towards the bum. Now we're going to slide the right knee down towards the right wrist. Take the right knee towards the left wrist. Exhale, lift the knee up to the left shoulder, elbow rather. And then inhale, take the right knee to the right tricep. One more time. Lower the right knee down to the right wrist. 
Take it to the left wrist, exhale. Lift the knee up to the left elbow, pause, and then straighten the right leg all the way out to the left side. Aha, all right. We're gonna spin the left heel down on the floor so the back foot is flat. Lift the left inner ankle up, and then ground down through all of your right thigh fingers. Inhale, open the chest, and lift the left arm up towards the ceiling. Good, fall in triangle. That left thigh is firming in towards the bone. We're feeling the right side body really active as we keep your hips from dropping down. Let's take another big breath in, gaze is up. Gaze can go down wherever it's more comfortable for your neck. And as you exhale, look down everyone. Take the left hand back underneath the shoulder and then spin on the ball of your back foot. Move the right foot back about halfway. Lean forward, bend the elbows in Chaturanga. Exhale, push back up to plank and then bring the right knee into your chest as you kick the right leg all the way up and back. Three-legged down dog, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, pausing here and then we step the right foot in between your hands. All right, come on to your spider fingers. Keep that left heel, that right heel underneath the knee and then let your hips sink down so that the right hip and the right knee, they're all on that same plane. We're gonna counter that by pressing that left thigh up in space. Good, as you breathe in, pull the legs to, together, feel that energy coming to the midline and then with your next inhale, lifting the trunk up. Biceps line up alongside the ears, coming into your crescent lunge. Rounding through the base of that right big toe and reaching back through that left heel. So you wanna feel your frontal hip points here, lifting up and away from that right thigh. Feeling that stretch in front of the left hip, those are called your hip flexor muscles. All right. Now turn the palms to face forward. Bend the elbows out to the sides in your cactus arms. And as you inhale, we're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together. Open the chest, maybe gaze up to the sky. And exhale, plug the forearms against one another from the elbow all the way to the longest finger. Feeling that stretch in between the shoulder blades. Let's do that two more times with the breath. Inhale, open up in your cactus. And exhale, hugging everything in, legs stay strong. Inhale, broadening through the chest, through the heart, and exhale, gluing the forearms together. As you inhale, take the arms out wide and then reach the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, inhale, lift the chest up, and then exhale, slowly descend your trunk down towards the ground, humble present, bringing the right chest to snuggle against the inner right knee. Right outer hip is hugging back and in towards the midline. Take another breath in, hands overhead. And as you exhale, release the hands down to the floor. All right, we're gonna heel toe the right foot about three inches off to the right side and transition your right hand to the inside of that foot. So now the wrists come back underneath the shoulders. Sink your hips down as much as you can, and then see if you can counter that once more by pressing the left thigh up into the bone. Either stay propped up on your hands, or if accessible for you today, bend the elbows and lower all the way down onto the mat. If you're somewhere in between, you can grab a block or two, and then take the block beneath the forearms instead. So whatever option you take with the arms, you want the chest to continuously move forward as the left heel draws back. And the right set of toes are pointing to the front of your mat. We're keeping the right knee squeezing in. The, those adductors are fired up and you should be able to feel the right knee pressing against the right shoulder in this lizard. One more breath. I know this is a very deep pose, but it's good for you. And then exhale, hands on the mat, arms are straight. Feel the right outer knee pressing against the tricep. And inhale, lift the right heel up towards the bum. Hold for three, for two, and one. Step back into plank. Inhale in plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
and exhale downward facing dog ah all right finding your breath reconnecting to that quiet place we started off our practice with and if your heels don't reach the ground by all means keep the heels lifted and if you feel that the back is rounding you can bend your knees and then work on just tilting the tailbone up as you reach the hips back. So you want to really feel the elongation in your spine, in your down dog. Okay. So the second side. As you breathe in, lift the left leg up and back, pausing in your three-legged dog. Again, options with the left foot. Either keep it in dorsiflexion just like this, or you can floint, which is a combo of your flexion and your point. All right, pull the right outer hip back, feel the right waist just as long as the left. One more breath here, hips are level. And as you exhale, shift forward, shoulders above the wrist, bend the left knee, get it to touch the upper outer arm of that, uh, that left arm. Keep the left heel rising up, pull the chest forward, gaze to the top of your mat. Inhale, left leg all the way up and back, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to that left tricep, gripping the mat with your finger pads. Inhale, left leg all the way up and back. Last one with some variations, left knee against that left tricep, left heel rising up high. Now inhale, lower the left knee down to the left wrist, take it over to the right wrist. Exhale, lift the left knee up to that right elbow. Inhale, left knee to tricep, Lower the knee down, take the knee to the right wrist, exhale, knee up to the left elbow, hold, right elbow for three, for two, and one. Now straighten that left leg all the way out to your right side. Good job. Spin the right heel down on the floor, feel the pinky toe side of the right foot pressing into the earth, and then root down through your left fingers as you open up the chest and reach the right arm straight up to the sky. Fall in triangle, feeling the left oblique here, working to lift your hips up nice and high, broadening through the shoulder blades, right leg is firm, left ankle flexed, and the gaze goes up or down, whatever is better for that neck. One more breath, exhale, look down to the floor, lower the right hand back down underneath the shoulder, and spin the back heel up. Slide the left foot half of the way back, chaturanga here, lean forward, bend the elbows halfway. Exhale, straighten the arms, push back to plank, and then lift the left knee into the chest. Inhale, left leg all the way up and back. Breathe, all right, exhale. Knee to nose, we're gonna hold for three, for two, and then one, step the left foot forward, come onto your fingers. How are we doing? All right, take a moment and breathe. In through the nose, out through the nose. All right, so ensuring that the front heel stays directly beneath that front knee, let your hips sink, and you're gonna keep your right heel reaching back. Now try to gather the feet together so you're feeling that left hamstring work. Press through the earth, and as you inhale, come rising all the way up, come into that crescent lunge. So again, feeling your frontal pelvic bowl lift up away from the floor. Imagine your bowl were a literal bowl with soup, and you don't want that soup to be tipping forward. Good, reaching the arms up, back leg is as firm as it can be. You can have a bend in the back knee if you feel any compression in the lower back. Now flipping your palms to face the front of your mat. Take an inhale, elbows wide. Pause for the exhale. Support the body, the spine, by drawing the navel in. Inhale, we're gonna take the arms back, squeeze the shoulder blades, open the chest, perhaps gazing up, and then exhale, opposite direction, gluing the forearms together, elbow all the way to the longest finger. Good. Inhale, opening up the chest. Strong legs, yogis. And exhale, hugging everything in. 
Good, inhale to open, getting into the shoulders, and then exhale, slowly squeeze. All right, last one. Inhale, open the chest, and then reach arms behind you, extend the arms, interlace the fingers the way that doesn't come as naturally. And then as you inhale, arms straighten any amount, you're gonna lift the chest, and exhale, slowly transition the gaze down towards that left big toe, as you allow your trunk to go the same direction. Snuggling the left side of your chest to the inner left knee as you pull the left hip back, squeezing it towards the midline and lifting your hands over your head. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, release the hands down to the floor. Take a breath in and out the mouth. Okay. Heel to the left foot about three inches off to the left side. Keep your toes, your five toes, pointing straight ahead. The left knee stays in line with the second toe. And then move the left hand to the inside of that front foot. All right, let the hips drop. Keep the hips heavy and then press the right thigh muscle up into the bone. Take your options here with your lizard. Either keep the arms straight land the forearms onto your blocks or all the way down onto the ground all right good pausing here keep squeezing the left knee in towards the left shoulder feel the inner thigh firing up and then that right heel continuously presses back as you try to draw the sternum forward such a deep deep pose for that left hip for both hips in general see if you can simply breathe through it and find that calm and steady pace with that breath. All right, one more in, and then exhale, palms flat on the floor. Here we go. Press the left knee in towards that left tricep or shoulder. Inhale, float the left heel up towards the left bum, holding for three, for two, and then one step back into plank. Inhale, belly lifts. Exhale, bend the elbows halfway, chaturanga. Inhale, urdhva mukha svanasana, stretching the belly. And exhale, adho mukha svanasana, downward facing dog. All right, pausing here. Take a big breath through the nose. Open the mouth, stick the tongue out. And release. All right, stay here for about five breaths, just feeling the effects of your practice thus far, keeping the eyes soft, the gaze steady at one part, in between the ankles or the shins, keeping your down dog active, ribs, they continue to hug in and support your spine. And then with your next breath in, walk the hands backwards towards your feet. And we'll take the feet wider than hips width. So maybe about a, a foot, a foot and a half apart with your heels. All right, turn your toes out so that they face the width of your mat. And then we'll bend your knees, let your hips sink all the way down. We're gonna come into your yogic squat, uh, malasana variation. So you're gonna plug the elbows in against your inner knees. Let the forearms come into one line from the elbow to the other elbow, palms together in your Anjali Mudra. And as you push your knees apart, you're gonna squeeze the knees in towards the arms. So even if this looks like a very simple posture, you're feeling intense action in your muscles. So if the heels don't reach the ground comfortably and you're fine with keeping the heels lifted, that's going to be pretty challenging, but by all means, go for it. Another way to modify your yogic squat is you can take blocks underneath your heels. I'm just going to show you how that looks like. And the other one. Or you can also roll up your mat and use that as sort of a cushion. We're not gonna be here for a long time. So keeping the chest lifted, allow the pelvis to be heavy. And then keep on pulling the front of your shoulders back. So you're allowing 
the heart center to cultivate this sense of opening. All right, take a breath in. And as you exhale, slowly release your hands down towards the floor. We'll walk the feet together until the bases of the big toes touch. And we're gonna move into your crow pose, your bakasana, or maybe uh, your kakasana, or maybe your bakasana if you're able to straighten out the arms. So do what you can. I know that this isn't an easy posture, but that's the reason why we practice, right? Um, and instead of staying fixated on what the pose should look like, I want you to approach the posture with a sense of mindfulness and really what we want to get out of our yoga practice is simply dialoguing with ourselves and getting to know ourselves better through the asana. So don't worry about it if um, you're unable to lift the feet up, that's overrated. All right, so take the knees out wide and we're gonna take the arms to the insides of your legs Palms are flat, shoulder width apart, and all you really need is about six to eight inches from the heel of the hand to your toes. Keeping the wrist creases pointing straight ahead. Now you lift the hips up, press your knees against your triceps all the way up towards the armpits if possible. And you're gonna look forward, keep pulling the gaze forward, pulling the sternum forward. As you breathe in, you're gonna lean into your fingertips elbows bend slightly and then float either one foot or both feet off of the floor all right so see if you can lift the heels closer up towards the bum or maybe some of you can begin to straighten out the elbows any amount will hold for three for two and then one slowly release the feet down onto the floor and breathe Straighten the legs out, turn your toes to point straight ahead, hold on to the opposite elbows in your Uttanasana, forward fold, and simply breathe. Good job. Release the arms down to the floor, bend your knees, and then one vertebra at a time, let's ragdoll our way up to standing. Whew. Roll the shoulders back, and let's come to the front of your mat. All right, so stand here with your feet about hips width apart. And you're gonna take your hands onto your hips just as a means of um, tact tactfully, tactily uh, steering your hips forward. So you wanna keep the pelvic bones pointing straight ahead. Bend both knees here. Let's lean over to your right foot. And then we're gonna lift the left leg up, crossing the left thigh against the right, and then bending your knees so much that you can feel the top thigh pressing and squeezing against the bottom. Feel free to stay right here, or if you can, we're gonna double wrap and take the left foot to wrap behind the calf muscle of that right leg. Now use your hands as your guide. Pull the left outer hip back, steer the right hip forward, and you want your knees to be pointing straight ahead of you. Take the arms to reach forward. Now take the left arm underneath the right, crossing strongly past the elbow so that as you bend the elbows, the right arm stacks on top of the left. Cross at the wrists and take the palms to touch. Garudasana, your eagle pose. You're gonna lift the elbows, the, the fingertips up away from the chest. Feel that stretch in your uh, rhomboid muscles and in the muscles around your shoulder blades. Keep the belly hugging in, sink the hips a little bit lower, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, rising up to unwind the left leg. And then slowly you're gonna extend the left leg behind you and lean your trunk forward, coming into your warrior three with your eagle arms. Keep pulling the chest forward. Keep that left hip from rolling open, left ankle is flexed. One more breath, and then slowly bend the right knee, land on the ball of your left foot. Inhale, lift the chest, and with your next inhale, arms reach up and release the arms. All right, take the right hand against your right outer thigh. Take another breath as you elongate through the left side, and then exhale, we'll come into a twist. So take the left elbow 
outside of the right knee. Take the tricep to press against the right outer knee. And then we're gonna bring your palms together in prayer. Inhale, push the right palm down as you roll the right shoulder head back. You'll either stay here, or if it feels good for you, take the left hand down onto the floor, keeping that connection between the left tricep and the right outer knee. And you'll reach the right arm up to the sky. Parivrita Parshva Konasana variation. Keep that right hip from rising up. The left thigh is pressing up in space. Last breath, option to take the right arm over the ear, gazing underneath the right armpit. And then as you exhale, release your twist. Both hands onto the floor. Inhaling, step the left foot forward, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, come rising up to stand. And then exhale, Tadasana, shake the legs out. Pause for a moment. Simply feel how different the right leg feels compared to the left. And don't worry, we are going to balance that out. All right, inhale, open the eyes. Exhale, hands onto your hips. Separate your feet so that the heels are underneath your sitting bones. And let's do the second side. So you'll bend both knees. Keep your frontal hip bones rising up. Lift the right thigh up and we're gonna cross the right thigh strongly against the left. Bending the knees, hinging through the hips, either staying here or taking your double wrap. So taking the right leg, right foot rather, behind the left calf muscle. Again, using your hands to palpate if your hips are square. So you want to have your knees pointing straight ahead. All right, take the arms parallel to the floor, palms facing down. The right arm goes underneath the left this time. Bend the elbow so that your left uh, arm stacks above the right. And then you're going to allow the palms to kiss in your eagle. Garudasana. So see if you can lift the elbows away from the chest, fingertips reaching up to the sky. Feel the stretch in your lats, the sides of your body. Sink a little bit lower, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the nose. One more breath, keeping your drishti at one spot so that you can really stay focused. Now with your next inhale, you're gonna lift up slightly. Unwind the right leg from your left, and then kick the right leg behind you, straighten that leg as you tip the trunk forward, coming into your Virabhadrasana three with your Garudasana arms. Warrior three with your eagle arm variation. Keeping the standing leg with a micro bend in the knee to protect the knee joint and also it makes you work a lot harder. One more breath and then bend the left knee, land on the ball of your back foot, Lift the chest up and with your inhale, release the arms, reach up for the sky. Exhale, land the left hand on your outer left hip. Take an inhale, reach up through the right side body. Exhale, cut across that bent knee. Take the right tricep outside of the left outer knee. Push against that knee, but keep the left knee in line with the second and third toe. Now bring the palms together in prayer. And you're going to roll that left shoulder back as you bring the thumbs in line with your sternum. Either stay here in prayer or you can take the right hand down to the floor outside the front foot. Left arm reaches in the exact opposite direction, keeping that right thigh active. Left outer hip firms in, keep the left side of the body long. Maybe take the top arm over the ear and see if you can pull the sternum towards the front of the room. So lean back a little bit. One more breath. Exhale, look down, release your twist. And then inhale, step forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, shake the legs out. All right, bend the knees, roll up to stand as you breathe in. And then slowly exhale. How are we doing? Good? All right, so a little bit more. You'll stay where you're at. I'm just gonna move to face you. 
uh, so that you have a better view. So bring the bases of your big toes together to touch. And as you breathe in, let's come into chair pose. Bending your knees, sinking your hips back so that the weight is mostly on your heels. Hugging the front ribs in. We're gonna look up, encourage that gaze, that shift in the gaze to pull the chest forward and up. Take another breath, Utkatasana, rolling the inner thighs together. And then as you exhale, palms together, lower the thumbs down to your heart space. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hinge forward, and then hook the left elbow outside of the right knee. Parshva Utkatasana. So again, pushing the palms down and using that resistance to deepen the twist, rolling the right shoulder head back, gazing over the right shoulder. We won't be here for long. Take one more breath. As you exhale, look down to the floor. Start to shift your weight into your toes. Lift the heels up and then come sitting on your heels. All right, keep that contact with the left tricep and that right outer knee, maybe even deepen that hinge over that knee. And then you're gonna trust yourselves here. Look down to the right side of your body and then plant your hands down on the right side of your mat. So the hands come shoulder width apart and you want the wrist creases to be forming one line. Spread the fingers, keeping the surface area of your foundations nice and wide. All right, now you're gonna shift and turn your shoulders so that your chest is right in between your thumbs. Inhale, lift the hips up, lean your legs against that left tricep and then shift your weight forward beyond your fingertips Maybe float your feet away from the floor in your Parshva Bakasana. So we're just holding it here, nothing else to do. Breathing in, breathing out, that's it. Stay for three, for two, and then one. Slowly lower the feet back down. Hands in prayer, take an inhale, very good. And exhale, straighten the legs out, lower the head shake the legs ah, okay basis of the big toes together let's do the other side as you breathe in weight in the heels hips back and down lifting the torso utkatasana chair pose good so you want the inner thighs to be rolling down towards one another outer hips are firming in and your toes are very nice and soft spreading the toes helps you engage the muscles of your lower leg Take your palms together in prayer as you exhale. Here you go. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, pull the navel in, twist over to your left side, and then hook the right tricep outside of the left knee. Keep pulling the right knee back so both knees, they stay in one plane. All right, now deepen that twist. Roll that left shoulder head back. Sink your hips a little bit lower. Maybe pull the chest towards the direction of uh, your head, the crown of your head. One more breath in your twisted chair. Exhale, gaze down to the floor. And then roll onto the balls of the feet. Lift the heels, don't think too much about it. And then simply sit down on your heels. Ooh, a lot of work in the inner thighs. All right, now deepen that hooking of the right arm outside the left knee. Trust yourselves here. Look down to the floor at your left side and then land your palms onto the ground. So now your fingertips are facing one side of your mat. All right, take a moment here to pull the left shoulder head back so that you can square the shoulders, both sides of the body at equal distances from wherever edge of the mat you are facing. And you're gonna shift your weight forward, come up onto your tippy toes, lift your hips up, bring the chest forward like you would in Chaturanga, bend the elbows, maybe about halfway, and then float your feet off the floor. Parshva Bakasana, second side. Keep the belly hugging in, elbows hugging in as well. Hold for three, for two, and one, and lower the feet all the way on the ground. Take the palms together, breathe, and then exhale, let's roll up to stand. So slowly feeling every articulation of your spine as we come back to Tadasana at the top of the mat. 
All right. Good. Finding center. Let's take a big breath in. Float the arms all the way up and overhead. Exhale slowly to fold here. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, step back to plank or jump through to Chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. All right, just a little bit more yogis. As you breathe in, lift the left leg up and back. Exhale, look forward and step the left foot, maybe about three-fourths of the way forward. You'll hop the back foot in maybe about a fourth so that you can completely straighten out your legs, keeping the left foot pointing forward and the right toes angled out to the right. If the knees are bending as you touch the floor, take a couple of blocks underneath each of your hands so that you can really feel that stretch in your hamstrings and work that right thigh muscle, your quads. All right, take one more breath here in your modified Parshva Tanasana. And as you exhale, we're gonna crawl your hands over to the left long edge of your mat and simultaneously rolling on to the blades of your feet. You can keep the blocks with you, or if you can reach the ground without bending your knees, then no need for the blocks. Stay on the fingers, ankles are flexed, and you're feeling that connection with your inner thighs. Take an inhale, pull the heart forward, and as you exhale, simply bend the elbows and drop the head. Feeling a stretch in your IT band muscles and really firming the ankles to strengthen them. All right, inhale, lift the chest up. Exhale, bend the knees, land the right knee on the floor. Point the ankle. And then snuggle your butt cheeks down to the floor so both sitting bones are rooted into the earth. Move the left foot back, keep the foot flat and your toes pointing forward. Now take your left fingertips onto the floor behind your sacrum. Inhale, right arm reaches up. Exhale, hook the right elbow outside the left knee. Take another breath in, lift the chest up. And as you exhale, deepening that twist in your Ardha Matsyandrasana. So feeling the navel area, initiate the twist, turning to the left. And then allowing the ribs to follow. The chest follows, the shoulders, and then lastly the gaze as you take your chin over the left shoulder. Good, inhale, gaze forward, exhale to release. All right, one more arm balance, or actually one out of two more. Lean into your hands so that you can take the right foot out in front of you. We're gonna come into your eagle legs. So option one, simply crossing the legs like you would at a dinner party, which we all miss. Option two, you'll double wrap. All right, so left foot behind that calf muscle. Keep your chest lifted. As you breathe in, right arm reaches up to the sky. Exhale, hooking the right elbow against that left knee. And then you're gonna plug both palms down onto the floor. We're gonna use a little bit of momentum here. As you breathe in, shift into your fingers, lift your hips up, square your chest towards the back of your mat. Now lean forward, bend the elbows, and then see if you can float your feet off the floor. All right, that's it. Your bakasana with your eagle legs. Holding for three, for two, and one. Landing the feet all the way down. Good job, yogis. Now stepping the left foot back, right foot back, finding plank, facing the back of your mat, navel draws in, and exhale, shift forward. Bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, rise up. Feel free to skip these vinyasas and exhale, downward facing dog. All right, last side, just a little bit more. Take an inhale, right leg lifts up and back. Exhale, look forward, step the right foot three fourths of the way forward. Left foot hops in about one fourth, starting off with your Parshvottanasana, straight legs here. 
So that right outer hip is pulling back. The left hip comes along for the right, squaring the hips towards um, your right foot. You're here for just one more breath, feeling the stretch in the back of your legs here. And with your exhale, pivoting to the right side. So once more, you're facing that same long edge of your mat. Rolling onto the blades of the feet, ankles are flexed, toes are spread out, and squeezing the legs together. So feel the inner thighs connect. Inhale, pull the sternum to the beyond your fingertips. Exhale, bend the elbows and fold. Keep the neck nice and long. Tops of the shoulders elevate. And you're breathing in, feeling your kneecaps rising up, breathing out. Go ahead, inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, bend the knees, lower the left knee on the floor, uncurl the back foot, snuggle both sitting bones to make contact with the ground, and then draw your right foot in. Keep the right knee pointing straight up to the sky. Right fingertips sprinkle onto the floor behind the sacrum. The back arm is just used as, um, as a way to keep the chest lifted. And inhale, left arm reaches up. Exhale, we twist over to the right. Hook the left elbow outside the right knee. Ardha Matsyandrasana. Take a lengthening inhale as you reach the crown of your head up to the sky. And as you exhale once more, emanating from the belly first, the waist, we find that twist ringing out the spine. Taking the gaze over the right shoulder once we feel that we have twisted just like a spiraling staircase. All right, take an inhale, shift the gaze forward. Exhale, release. Take the hands back, lean into the palms. Move your left foot to point straight in front of you and then cross the right thigh against the left. So coming into your eagle leg variation of your choice. Personally, I find the double wrap is a lot easier. Keep the chest lifted, here we go. Inhale, left arm touches the sky. Exhale, we hook the arm outside the right knee. Look towards the right side. Again, trust yourselves here. Plug your palms flat onto the floor. Heels of the palms in one line. Now shift your shoulders to face the front edge of your mat. Inhale, exhale, use a little bit of momentum to lift your light, light bums off the floor. Square the shoulders to the front of your mat and then begin to lean forward like you are doing chaturanga. Bend the elbows halfway only and then see if you can float your feet off the floor. That's it. Your Parshva Bakasana with your Garudasana legs. That's a mouthful. We'll stay for three, for two, and one. Step the feet on the floor. Unwind the legs, find plant facing the front of your mat. Last vinyasa, exhale, bend the elbows, keep the navel hugging. Inhale, coming into your back bend, and exhale, downward facing dog. All right, breathe in through the nose, open the mouth, release. Take three more breaths. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, bend the knees all the way onto the floor. Let's take child's pose. Knees wide enough so that as you breathe, you can let the belly expand freely. Sitting on your heels first, lowering the forehead down, flip your palms to face skywards, or you can take the arms behind you, whatever feels best for your body. So rotate the wrists, starting to shift gears, allowing the shoulders to just droop down. As you breathe into your back ribs, Breathe into your lower back. Letting the belly softly ebb and flow with the breath. And then whenever you're ready, bring the fingertips underneath your shoulders and let's roll all the way up to seated. All right, 
come casually into your tabletop. We're gonna move the right foot forward so that we come into a low lunge. And we'll move our right foot over to your left hand and we'll rest onto the outside edge of the right leg, coming into your pigeon, keeping the right ankle flexed. The top foot is long and the toenails are on the floor. All right, now you want to keep your hips square in this position, this pose. You pull the right hip back, and if it feels too, too uncomfortable for the hips to be rising up this high without any support, you can grab your books or your block, and then just hold them underneath your uh, hands. All right, taking the hands underneath the shoulders. Good. Feel the stretch in front of that left hip. Back bending here as well. Open the chest. We'll stay for one more breath. And as you breathe out, move your hands in front of your right shin. And you'll either stay on your palms, you can come onto the forearms, or maybe even land on the forehead. So whatever feels like you can come to your edge and stay there for just about a few breaths. All right, now if this is causing um, suspicious discomfort around any of your joints, you can lessen the intensity by bringing the right heel closer towards that left hip. Keeping the hips square, pause here, letting gravity have its way as you gradually allow the work of your outer hips, of your inner thighs to dissolve and subside in your pigeon. If you want to stay for a little bit longer, feel free to pause the video. As you breathe in, look up. Breathe out, slowly come out of your pigeon. Now lean into your right hip. And we're gonna flip the left knee off the floor as we straighten out both legs to the sides of your mat. Flex the ankles, keep your toes pointing straight up towards the ceiling, and then bring your hands in front of your hips. We're gonna use that as some traction to be able to tip your pelvis forward. Now, if sitting upright without any support underneath the, the hips um, doesn't feel good for the lower back, let's say you feel like you're in a rounded position, you can grab first, if you have a blanket nearby, grab the blanket. Otherwise, sit on the block. And if you're sitting on the block, you're just going to stay here for this next one. Okay. If you're on a blanket or you're on the floor, take an inhale, lift the chest, and as you breathe out, transition your hands away from the rest of the body. Pause when you can no longer crawl the fingers forward. Take an inhale, reach out through the heels, and exhale, slowly lower your head down. Feeling that sensation in your inner thighs, your hamstrings, your back muscles are getting a stretch as well. Upavishta Konasana. Just breathing into the sensations. Allowing yourselves to continue to cultivate mindfulness. Whether it's in a posture that requires intense focus or one that is more about letting go. Right. Inhale, lifting the gaze and exhale coming out of your fold. All right, so bend the left knee in towards you. We're gonna do pigeon on the other leg facing the back of your mat. Come rolling onto your right knee, pointing the ankle down, and let's just get into it the same way we did the first side. So starting off with the left foot flat on the floor in a low lunge, already you wanna start with maximum space between both of your thighs, feeling that stretch in your right psoas. Bring the fingertips on the floor, and then heel toe your left foot over to your right hand. All right, 
right mindfully lower down onto the outer edge of the left leg and then you're going to shift an inch your right leg as far back behind you moving your hands underneath the shoulders we're starting off with a back bend if you need those blocks underneath your hands by all means use them take one more breath again option to move the right heel closer towards that right uh with your next exhale, let's take our hip opener, left hip opener. So folding all the way down onto the ground. Good. And then just allowing yourselves to be observers of whatever comes up. knowing that these emotions that may arise in your practice or in your lives are temporary and what will always remain is that soul that spirit inside of you and that is what we wish to strengthen so that faced with any adversity, any challenges that life may throw at us, we can always remain steadfast and mentally and spiritually strong. And everything too will pass. Inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, come out of your pigeon. Now we're gonna roll onto the left outer hip. One more seated posture. Baddha Konasana, taking the soles of the feet together, lifting your hips up, move the hips closer to the heels, and then open up the soles of your feet so that we can really open up your inner groins, your inner legs. Inhale, elevating your chest, and then exhale, folding, intending your chest way beyond your toes, and then gently using the elbows as an anchor to create more opening in the inner legs. Let the gaze be soft. Feel that shift in energy. Allow the nervous system to calm down. Maybe lengthening the exhales to elicit that parasympathetic nervous system even more. And inhale, we lift the gaze hands underneath the knees and draw the legs together. All right, come facing the front of your mat. And let's roll all the way down to the floor. Almost there, yogis. Keep your feet flat on the ground. Have the feet facing the front of your mat and then you're gonna walk your heels back until you can graze the back of your heels with your longest finger. Arms straight, palms flat on the floor alongside the body. Curl the tailbone under slightly and rooting down through the heels, inhale, lift your hips up until you find one line from your knees, the outer hips all the way to your outer shoulders. Good, keep the navel drawing in. Now we're gonna roll the backs of the shoulders underneath the body and then interlace the fingers, straighten the arms, press the forearms, the blades of the forearms into the floor and then feeling that rebound effect of the chest lifting up towards your chin as you draw the chin away from the chest. Ground down through the inner arches of the feet. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. Just bringing strength back into the back body as we open the front. One more breath in. Exhale, split the arms apart. Begin to roll back on the floor one vertebra at a time. Pause for a moment. Inhale, hug the knees in towards your chest. All right, now keep the left knee pulling into the left armpit. Extend the right leg forward and down towards the floor. We'll take the left arm out in your cactus arm to the left side. Inhale, plug the back of the left shoulder in the floor, and then exhale, finding your twist over to the right side. 
this. So you're using the right hand as a gentle anchor down on your left knee. Gazing over to your left arm to encourage that left shoulder from lifting up. Breathing into that big left lung. Letting the lower back release. And as you breathe in, coming back to center. Let's switch your legs. Pull the right knee in towards the right armpit. Inhale, extend the left leg all the way forward. Reach through the heel. Take the right arm out to the side. Elbow in line with the shoulder. Inhale, broadening across the front body. And then exhale, guiding that top knee across the body over to the floor on your left side. Letting yourself tip onto the outside edge of the left leg as you shift your gaze to the right arm. Relaxing your toes. Feeling that right outer hip, outer thigh start to stretch out. Breathing into the right side of your chest. And then inhale, come back to center. One last embrace, Apanasana. Lifting your head up, wrapping your arm bones around your shin bones, squeezing yourself into a tight, tight cannonball. Let's take a full breath in. Hold the breath at the very top for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. Open the mouth, exhale, and slowly allow the skull to rest on the floor. Begin to extend the limbs in all directions, finding space between your feet to allow the workings of your inner thighs to soften. Keeping your palms facing skywards, you continue to cultivate this receptiveness that we have developed in the heart center. Closing the eyes. Allowing the body to melt into the earth. Gradually releasing any semblance of control. And just like a corpse, allowing the body to shed off its old ways, its old habits. So that as we awake, we wake up a new person. Gently follow the natural ebb and flow of the breath. We'll stay here for a couple of minutes. Shavasana.
start to deepen the breath once more, filling the belly up with a full inhalation. Letting it go with the exhale. Starting to reintroduce movement into your toes and your fingers, gently rocking your skull side to side. And when you're ready, gather the legs together. Let's stretch the body out. Placing the fingers overhead, pointing, flexing your feet. Exhale here with a bend in your knees. Come rolling onto either side. Keep your eyes closed. We're gonna press all the way up into a comfortable seated position. Keep the torso upright, spine is nice and tall. Let's bring the palms together in prayer. Thumbs lining up with your heart center. Take a full breath in, lift the heart up. Exhale, bow down towards the fingers. Taking this moment to simply give gratitude that we were one of the lucky few who have been awarded with another day, another day full of opportunities, full of possibilities. Thankful for this practice of yoga. Thankful for our decision to step on our mat today, for carving time out for ourselves, and for really taking this time to get to know ourselves better. May you stay happy, healthy, and safe, and enjoy the rest of your day ahead. Namaste.